Today we begin a new series I've been talking about coming up, The Voices in My Head, 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 Head. We're going to be Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Go ahead and turn to that, Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. And the irony of it all is that, as the choir knows, and as some of you know, I've been having some tremendous vocal issues over the last few weeks. So please be prayerful for me this morning. It's kind of going in and out. Uh, I've got allergies, I think. I didn't think it was that at first, but it has really hit me hard over the last 24 to 48 hours. And uh, with the eye watering and the sinuses and everything. And so hopefully uh, I'll be strong enough to get through this. Just be prayerful for it this morning. But we all have them. We all have voices in our head. I mean, let's be honest. And all of us talk to ourselves, at least on the inside. Some of us occasionally have those conversations out loud, and if others were to hear it, they would think we were crazy. And Well, we probably are, but that's all right. Paul David Tripp in his book, New Morning Mercies, says this, No one is more influential in your life than you are because no one talks to you more than you do. It's a fact that you and I are in an endless conversation with ourselves. Most of us have learned that it's best not to move our lips because people will think we're crazy, but we never stop talking to ourselves. And it's true. It's one of those things that we probably somewhere we have some existential crisis somewhere along the way in our lives where we think, am I insane? But everybody's doing it. So, so be rest assured you're okay. You're not insane. In fact, it's healthy to be talking to yourself. It's okay. But there are various voices in our heads. They're not always all our own. Some of those voices in our heads are encouraging, and some of them are discouraging. Encouraging voices are ones we hear that, that lead us to think positively about a situation or about ourselves, and as we approach it, we have the I can handle it or I can do it voice. But then there's the ones that lead us to think negatively, those discouraging voices, and they lead us to go to I can't handle it, I can't do it. Those voices are also in our head, and they're competing all the time. As I said, some of the voices in our heads are not our own. They can be the voices of other people who say things to us or have said things in the past or in our present moment that get in our head and influence us in one direction or another. Those voices may tell us negative things like we're unloved, unwanted, unintelligent, maybe even unnoticed. Those voices, those negative voices, want to breed insecurity, maybe feelings of loneliness and despair in our lives so that we feel worthless. Because the devil wants us to feel worthless. Let's be honest. That's what he wants. Other voices might be encouraging, telling us how loved, wanted, and intelligent, and special we are, thus breeding confidence in us. This series is going to be about dealing with past voices, present voices, and learning to trust what God says to us and about us and about our future. From what we look at, we'll be able to see the importance of identifying and isolating those negative voices and replacing them with more positive voices in our lives. Now understand, I'm not advocating that we surround ourselves with yes people who are always there to just enable us even when we're wrong. I don't believe in that either. I think we should surround ourselves with joy-filled Christians who will be honest with us, hold us accountable when we need it, but do it all in a spirit of love and with a heart of encouragement. Those are the people who will work in conjunction with the Bible, which is God's word to us, and the Holy Spirit, which is His voice in us, and, and, and encourage us and lead us to who we need to be. And, and that's the voice we really need to listen to is God's voice. God's voice. So for the first message in the series, we're going to talk about dealing with the voices from our past. Of late in Sunday school and in our study of Psalms on Wednesday nights, we, we've learned a lot about the Israelites, especially during the time of the Babylonian exile, how they, how they got themselves in that situation, how God allowed them to be taken in exile, how they were handling themselves in it, how God delivers them out. Now talk about a people that had a variety of voices in their head, all right? I mean, they had the Babylonians in their present moment denigrating God, Jehovah God. They had discouraging voices in their head saying, woe is me. They had voices of doubt about their future. 
Not only that, they had past voices that had led them astray, and those voices had proven unreliable. They had led them to a great deal of hurt and suffering. In fact, that's one way to identify whether a voice is helpful or hurtful, through the consequences that come about when we listen to them. The Israelites had listened to idolatrous foreigners. They had listened to unfaithful priests. They had listened to their own voices telling them it was okay to indulge the flesh. And the result of all that? Exile from their home and from the corporate worship of God. A distance from God. Now they had to decide what to do with those voices. And in Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, just two verses, God tells them what to do with the voices and memories of the past as He offers them hope for the future. Follow along with me as I read verses 18 and 19. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder the things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. <clears throat> Very brief message today. I got it going early and we're going to probably finish early because of that. Two points. I'm not a good preacher today, I'm sorry. No three points in a poem, just two points. Very simple. Point number one, don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the past. On May 6, 1954, Roger Bannister became the first man in history to run a mile in less than four minutes. Within two months, John Landy eclipsed that by 1.4 seconds. So on August 7, 1954, is you know, good guys do. They decided, let's have a race against each other. Just see how it comes out. Yeah, I'm sure there was some money to be made in that too somewhere along the way. As they moved in the last lap, Landy held the lead, the guy who had broken Bannister's record. And it looked like he was going to win, but he got near the finish line, and a voice in his head said, where's Bannister? And it caused him to turn and look behind him. Well, Bannister was close enough that that last little bit of distraction allowed him to shoot right by Landy and beat him. Landy said later, if I hadn't looked back, I would have won. You see, the more we think about the past, the more we get stuck in the past, unable to enjoy the present or move forward into a better future. Now, this is not a blanket statement to forget everything from our past. We learn from the past. And some of the past voices are worth holding on to. I mean, if you had encouraging, loving parents, for instance, you may find yourself saying some of the same encouraging and loving things to your children or grandchildren. Hold on to that. Don't be afraid of that. That's great. Maybe some of you didn't have those kinds of parents, though. And they said those ugly things to you that made you feel unloved made you feel discouraged, made you feel worthless. And the scary thing for you is you find yourself saying some of those same things. Break the cycle. Put that voice in the past, bury it, leave it there, and break the cycle. Don't listen to it anymore. You don't have to listen to it. The Israelites had a choice to, to listen to past voices, blend in in Babylon. They, they got there at idolatry. It would have been real easy to say, well, we'll just keep going down the path path, at least we're alive, we survive. They could choose to be nothing more than who they had become. Or they could listen to God and His promises of what He wanted to make them, repent and leave the past behind them and move forward with God. But you see, to get to new things, we have to let go of the old sometimes. Learn from it, yes, but let it go. To live with joy in the present and expectation for the future, we have to particularly shed the negative voices of the past. Like I said, maybe your parents or so-called friends told you that you were dumb or worthless. Some parents do that. Maybe not in those exact words, but in the words they used when they judged you. I want you to know that God doesn't see you that way. He made you to know Him and to be in a relationship of love where you have eternal value. He gave His only Son to die for your sin so you can know Him. I don't think that's, that's a lack of value that He sees in you. He wouldn't do that otherwise. So don't listen to the negative voices from the past. Listen to God right now. What is He saying to and about you? What is He saying? to and about you. 
Secondly, this morning, believe God has a better life for you. Believe God has a better life for you. Those voices from the past, man, they can really drag you down, make you feel worthless, make you feel like you are everything that that person has said about you or people have said about you in the past. Well, you're a new creation. You're not what you once were anyway. And God has promised that He's going to do something new. Uh, we saw in verse 18, do not call to mind the former things, but look at verse 19. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Listen, we, we can try, and we do. Don't we? we can try to transform ourselves. And it might work for a little while. <clears throat> I can change myself in ways for a little while. But eventually I'll go back to what I was. Because I can't make lasting change in my life. I mean, all these self-help organizations, AA, things like that. People have to go to those things because they come to a point where they realize they can't do it by themselves. They need help. We cannot change ourselves by ourselves. We need help. It just doesn't work. I didn't become what I am without parents and a sister and friends and people that influence me. All of us are a product of our environment to an extent. We just are. And that's what we're talking about. Sometimes that product was an, that, that environment was a negative environment. And we got to leave that behind and, and recognize that God wants to transform us with a positive environment that He shapes us and He molds us in and He makes us new. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If anyone is Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Jesus is in the business of making people new. That's revealed throughout the Gospels. Why do you think he healed people? Why do you think he, he, he preached things that sometimes seem contradictory to, to God's law when really what he was doing was he was clarifying the very heart of God? And he's saying, no, it's about seeing God, it's about knowing God, and it's about understanding God's character. Walk in that, learn that. He wants to transform us from what we think of ourselves based on what people have told us into listening to what He says about us and tells us through His Word and by His Spirit. Now, I admit, it's not easy to get the voices from our past out of our heads. I struggle with that just like anybody else. I mean, I had great parents, but I've had things happen in my life and had people say things to me and do things to me that have left past voices in my head just like anybody else in this room. We have to pick and choose what we're going to believe, what we're going to accept, and what we're not. But those voices are ingrained in us, and they are persistent. You know what that means? It means we need some amplification. Ever been to a concert and the instruments were louder than the singer's? Yeah, I've been to a few of those. That's poor sound engineering. That's what that is. All of us enjoy the instruments. We want to hear them, but we can't understand the message of the song without the lyrics. Therefore, the voices need to be amplified above the instruments. The same principle applies to what I'm talking about this morning. If we want to get rid of the pesky voices from the past, those negative voices, we need to amplify another voice over those voices until they fade into the background or fade away forever, and that voice is God's voice. We amplify His voice. How do we amplify His voice? How do we do that? I'd like to amplify mine a little bit more this morning. I just can't project. I'm sorry. We amplify His voice by doing the things that I talk about all the time. His voice is right here. Every time we leave church and we take God's word and we just do this and leave it that way the rest of the week, it's like a sound board, the amplification board, where, where we got a volume control on it and we just turn it down so that we can't hear it. When what we really should do when we're responding to what God has said to us in a message like that is we should go home and we should spend time in His Word every day and turn it up. Just keep turning it up. Just keep turning it up louder and louder and louder. God, I want to hear you more. God, I want to hear you over everything. Please drown out this stuff in my life. I want to hear you. Spend more time in His Word, less time talking to ourselves. We amplify His voice by spending more time in prayer. 
And, and that comes by, by recognizing that prayer is not just gimme, gimme, gimme and talking the entire time. Prayer is sometimes just sitting there and just breathing. Just breathing. God, I just want to hear you. I, I want to hear your voice just as much as I can feel the breath, the air moving in and out of my lungs. I want to hear your voice. Say, is God going to speak out loud to me? No, probably not. But he's going to speak peace to your heart. And then he's going to prompt you to start praying about something in particular that's going on in your life or in life of somebody else. And then he's going to give you peace about that. And as you unload that, he's going to take it. And then when you've got that confusing situation, he's going to start giving you some clarity. And you'll have a hard time discerning if that's just you finally figuring it out or if God's speaking to you. But I'm telling you, if you're in prayer, it's God speaking to you. Amplify his voice. One other way we amplify his voice is when we spend time with people who we know speak God's truth into our lives. When we forsake those relationships where people are telling us worldly things and we gravitate toward relationships with people that tell us the things of God. Amplify his voice. His words here in Isaiah are words meant to encourage them to put the past behind them and look to Him for a brighter future. And yes, it can be a hard, long process, but God is able if we are willing. Look at the last part of verse 19. Will you not be aware of it? This was a call to pay attention to His work in their lives, to recognize that He would make a way where there seems to be no way. As we sang a moment ago, He says, I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. A, a path where there is no path. Provision where there is no provision. God can do that. He and He alone can chart a course out of the past and into His presence, which is what He wants to do with us. We simply must choose to amplify His voice in our lives so that He can overcome the voices that haunt us from our past. In Philippians 3.13, Paul talks about forgetting what lies behind and in Encourage us to, encourages us to reach forward to what lies ahead. That's the viewpoint we need. That's what we need. I, I, more than anybody on earth, Christian people ought to be living in the moment and looking toward the future. And what keeps us from doing that is all too often the voices in our head telling us, we have no future that's worth anything. We're not worth this. We're not worth that. We've got to learn to amplify God's voice over those. Hear what God's saying about us. No matter what you did this morning, no matter what you said yesterday, no matter what you projected with your life this past week, God still loves you. You still mean something to Him. You always will. You know why? Because you're His child. You are his child. There's not a person in this room that's had a child that that child still doesn't mean something to you and you still don't love them. God will always love you. God will always look to shape you and mold you to be somebody new. He doesn't want you to be a prisoner of your past. He doesn't want you to be a prisoner of what people have said about you or done to you. He wants you free in him. So listen to what he says about you. Don't listen to what you have heard in the past. Let go of that stuff. So maybe you have voices from your past that are constantly dragging you down and I convince you you're a nobody and the world thinks nothing of you. You know what my response to that is? And I'm going to give this to you with every bit of voice i got left. Who cares? Who cares if the world thinks nothing of us? The world didn't make us. The world doesn't sustain us, and the world has done nothing to redeem us from our sin. Who cares? I don't care anymore what somebody from my past thought of me back then. I don't care. I care about what God sees in me, what He wants to do with me, and you should too, because that's all that matters. God did all of these things. God made me. God sustained me. God redeemed me, and he did it for you. And that's all that matters. If you're a believer in Jesus, listen to Romans 8.1. 
Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You may have past voices that are trying to speak condemnation into your head. But they can't take away your salvation. They can't do that. Those voices are lying to you. Jesus has set us free by his blood. He wants to speak truth to us about who we are and how special he sees us. So don't dwell on the past. Dwell in Christ. Listen to his voice. Let him deal with the voice of your past. Give you a new outlook on who you are and what your purpose is in life. Then you don't have to be discouraged. You can be at peace, full of joy. And I'm going to give you a secret here. You can have fun. You can have fun walking with Jesus and his people. I know I do. You have fun. Would you characterize your life as fun? Now, what makes it fun? Well, not for everybody in this room. Not everybody in this room may be Jesus, the answer to that. Is it temporary fun or is it eternal fun? You see, I'm enjoying eternal fun. You see, I enjoy the presence of God. That's fun. I enjoy the presence of God's people. That's fun. I enjoy worshiping Him. That's fun. I enjoy serving Him. That's fun. And you know what? All those things I carry with me into eternity. I mean, if you're out here and enjoying sex, drugs, alcohol, and all that, when the end comes, those things are gone. You're enjoying a fun that is far less than what God designed you to have. And it's going to stop when you stop listening to the voices telling you this is fun and start recognizing this is only temporary. I want to know the eternal God who loves me, made me, and wants to save me and wants to give me something that's eternal. Those voices in our head, they're temporary. And they can't offer anything eternal. Start listening to God. Start doing it his way, and I guarantee you, you'll find a new life that you're going to find you didn't think was going to be that much fun. But it will be if you really give yourself completely to God and his voice. Let's pray together. Father, come to you this morning, and I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the voices from my past, both good and bad. The good ones help direct me in the direction that I should go. The bad ones, while they had an impact in the moment, now serve as a warning and a reminder of who I once was, but no longer have to be. Thank you for that. Lord, I thank you that my past is forgiven, and the past of those in Christ here is forgiven. Our present and our future also involves forgiveness. Thank you for that. Lord, thank you for giving us your word and your spirit and fellow believers so that you can speak your truth into our lives to overcome the false things and the negative things that have been spoken into our lives all this time. Help us to choose to amplify your voice over all these other voices. Bring clarity to our lives, Lord, in a way that only you can. Transform our way of thinking and seeing ourselves and seeing the world around us to see it the way you do to see ourselves the way you do, and to walk the way you want us to walk. And Lord, then give us your peace and joy, and Lord, help us to just have fun walking in you, glorifying you and serving you, because that's your goal for us. You want us to walk with you and recognize that it's the greatest thing we can do. So Lord, help us to put the things of the past behind us, or even the things that are troubling us in the present, and trust in you right now in this moment. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.